Those springs are popping. Starting the day off in the Duramax, going to get some shocks. My shocks are rebuilt. Before I reveal the shocks to you, I have to bring the Duramax in. I gotta do a front brake job. That's pretty close. This rust doesn't have nothing on me. Rust is kicking my butt. those breaks off my mind that's really good now I have something that I want to discuss with all of you a lot of you have been asking these questions I'm, I'm glad that I finally have the chance to answer your questions and give you the answers this uh, this must not be the right package thanks Cameron for the fan mail I finally got this for this dirty guy. This should be the right package. So there is a reason why I didn't reach right out to you guys and, and answer all of your questions when you did ask them in the comment section below, which I appreciate when you go to the comment section below, because it gives us this wonderful thing we call interaction, and I get to see what you guys are thinking. I get to reply to what you guys are thinking. I bought Crush on an online auction. What I thought I bought was a 2016 YZ1000 with 35 miles on it that had been rolled over, that still ran, that still drove. In my opinion, I was scammed. I'm not going to cry or moan or be sad or anything like that. I just simply tried to reach out, tell them what, how I felt and what I thought would be fair for all of us. And unfortunately, after days and weeks went by, they weren't going to move on the price that I paid for this thing, so there was no... I was wasting my time. If you buy any kind of machine online, be careful. Now I didn't know the entire situation on this machine. What I did know is I have some knowledge on fixing stuff. I do know that there are some people that go out and buy something like this and can't control it. So that's exactly what I was hoping for. I was hoping some idiot bought this thing, did not know how to drive it, rolled it over after 35 miles and just said, you know what, I'm done. Unfortunately, I did not get that kind of machine. Far from it. Look at it, I got those two bolts replaced. At least that's what it looks like. However, there's nuts I have to install because the guy who owned this before me, or the chick that owned this before me, stripped those, uh, those nuts out. So this situation is kind of like the overall situation with this whole machine. <laughs> yeah, so going back to the story, I bought this thing online, so I had to do an online over the phone bid. Yeah. Cool, cool. The cool, cool thing was me buying it. Heading to Jake the Toilet Snakes right now. So I discussed it with my buddy Jake, we talked about it a little bit. What am I hitting my head on? Holy crap, I see it you guys. I see it! We're here! Now I just gotta make sure I can pick it up and make sure all the paperwork and everything is all taken care of. It's, it's here. What's funny is the guys and I were talking about side by sides and building one from scratch and, and seeing what, what our next moves would be and, and what would entertain you guys and it came down to a side by side. So after we started discussing that at lunchtime, 12 hours later, I own one of these. I kind of just pulled the trigger. So don't let you pay for it. Well, I'll tell you in just a second. So I, I pull up into Pennsylvania. I'm from New York, so I drive over the border. We go to PA. I pick this thing up and it looks like this. So I had light bars here. I think I had a light bar right here. White springs, no machine decal. So I currently have the battery off. All you gotta simply do to turn the computer on is put that right there, and then our computer starts back up. 
So when I purchased this thing, it had an error code on here and I believe it said 35. You can see now it says 2783. And there were about 150 hours on it when I bought it. Okay Dalton, I've heard a lot of this before. You don't have to keep repeating yourself. Well, there are some things that I have missed and also we get new machines and machine freaks every day so I need to, I just figured this video we could bring everybody up to speed. So I set a limit, I played within it, and what that means is on the auction site I said, hey, I only wanna spend X amount of dollars, I'm not going over that, that's all there is to it. Uh, this machine, new, sells for 19.5, I do believe, that's $19,500 US. We are in America, that's why my flag is painted. Yeah, I think you guys get the picture. So what I ended up paying for it was $7,400. That was before, um, that was before auction fees, transaction fees, and document fees. I still have to pay for registration and insurance if I insure this thing. So you got a $19,500 machine for $7,400 with fees. Let's, let's just say $1,200 for, for this instance. So $8,600 before registration fees. So Dalton, you, you bought it for less than half the price that you would a new one and it's only two years old. Yes, it is absolutely true. However, I'm not, I'm not worried about that. I'm just worried about the credibility, the word, what's on that listing, what I'm actually buying. If I personally knew that I was going to get the machine that I got, I probably wouldn't pay as much as that. I, I just don't feel like it's it's fair. If I didn't work on this thing myself, the labor costs alone would have been two, three, four thousand dollars $4,000. There's been a lot of work. Granted, not a lot of money in parts, just a lot of, you have to take so many things apart to get to the little tiny things that matter. These parts include bushings, ball joints, CV axles all the way around, bushings all the way around, oil, fluids all the way around. But then you run into stuff like uh, broken bolts, missing bolts, bolts that aren't even supposed to be where you're, yeah. So I don't want you to feel bad for me at all. I don't, I could care less. I'm just spreading awareness to you guys so that you guys can, can save yourselves. I hope this video does something for you in that, in that case. What I originally tried to do is, was I tried to contact the auction house because I went through a different, I went through a service which then bought it from the auction house and took care of all the logistics and all the paperwork and things like that. After I found out that the 35 was an error code and not the actual mileage, I said, whoa, 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 we gotta do something about the price here because if I knew that it had this many miles in this short of time, this guy rode the hell out of it. I just gotta thank Carl B for the spam mail. This thing comes in clutch, thank you very much. So yeah, I hope I save one person the hassle that I've gone through by making this video. I do wanna mention the reminder, April 21st, we are going to Race Crush at Society Hill, South Carolina. I hope to see you there. All the info will be in the description. I'll even put it in the comment section as well. Uh, Seth will be there, Jake will be there, I will be there. We will have a meet and greet. We'll start around 11 o'clock in the morning. We'll run to about 7 p.m. I race at 4 p.m. Yamaha will be there with their test drive stuff so you can ride the brand new stuff that they have out there and yes that is free mountain dew is going to be there they're going to have some sort of rope into the lake or something like that it's going to be a very very good time we're going to have some autographs we're going to just have have a blast no matter how old you are come on out come meet 3d machines and the crew <laughs> I bought what I believe is a really, really good fuel filter. I actually bought three of them, so I'm hoping they fit. Otherwise, I don't only have one fuel filter that doesn't fit, but I have two others. Right, I can already tell that it's a different shape. You gotta be really careful, because you don't want gas in your eyes. I've had that happen two times, I think, unless I blacked out the third time. One time it was so bad it went down my throat and everything. It was like Niagara Falls and it was not good at all. I literally thought I was going to die. Okay, there's the old one. You can see there's, there's only a little bit of debris right there. O overall, it looks pretty good. Last time Jason was here, we worked on the back end. We removed the shocks and everything. So now we can go ahead and while he's out here, we'll go ahead and put everything back together. It's kind of funny how that works out. The shocks are in the box right there. Before I reveal those though, I want to go ahead and see what the hours, I want to see what the hours read because everything is getting like a total rebuild right now. 159.3 hours. That way I'll know how long everything lasts. Ball joints, differential seals, bushing, shocks. That way I can do all my preventative maintenance. 
nice new seals. Just like that, the front shocks are installed. They're looking really, really good. They're the same color as the tree kickers or the rack rails, whatever you want to call them. Now, a lot of people are asking if I'm going to wrap crush. I am going to wrap crush. Crush's wrap is in, so uh, be on the lookout for that. These, these sway bar end links are off because we're replacing bushings in here. I just got done replacing the grease fittings. They originally had a straight grease fitting, but I installed a 45 for easy accessibility. I got a lot of new parts in, including hubcaps and things. Here's the other bushing. New one's in, but I can't tighten the band. Doesn't look like Chuck kept track of a uh, Chuck parts. Norris? Doesn't look like he kept track of anything when he took it off and then couldn't find anything to put it in, so he just started using cheap Chineseium American size nuts. Old sloppy bushing, new shiny bushing with a tighter tolerance. Those look awesome. Man, I can't get over how good those springs look. Crush is stepping up his game. I hope you guys enjoyed this 3D Machines production. Until next time, stay froggy fresh, stay super fly. See you later.